Hey everybody, this is Jason and uh, welcome back to the 3D Printing Corner. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at a higher end material. Uh, in particular, we're going to be looking at a Ninja Tech. Uh, the particular one we're looking at is Cheetah, which is their semi-flexible material. They claim this one is uh, much easier to print than a lot of other flexibles. Uh, now, first off, note my Monoprice Maker Select Plus is not set up specifically to print flexibles. The only modification that's been done to my extruder is adding a uh, Micro Swiss all metal hot end. Otherwise, there's no modifications to make this thing print flexibles any better than any other printer. So let's start out. We'll take a look at the spool. So it's a pretty standard, durable plastic spool. It's a 500 uh, gram spool. Uh, it does have one of the things that drives me crazy is it only has tie-off spots right here, which means if your filament ended right here, you've got to use a whole wind almost to uh, tie it off. Um, and you can get around that by using things like binder clips and things like that, but the spool should be functional for what its purpose is. Uh, it is wound incredibly nice. Uh, the layers of filament on the wind are almost perfect. Uh, it does have a pet peeve of mine. The filament on the side here on the label does not tell me how hot to print it. Um, that drives me absolutely crazy. I had to do quite a bit of searching around online to find what the optimum printing temperatures were. Uh, I ended up using 235 on my extruder. Uh, I did end up going with a 55C bed. Uh, I couldn't really find a great recommendation on what bed temp to use. I saw things anywhere from 45 degrees up to 65 or 70 degrees. I had the best luck with it at 55, so that's where I left it. So let's go ahead. I've got a few prints here. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so let's start out with the Maker Coin here. Um, it looks really nice. Uh, I will say it's stringy, but it's TPU, so that's pretty normal. Um, we've seen this with other TPUs that we've reviewed. Uh, it's first layer. It is really hard to get a nice first layer with this stuff. Um, varying bed temps, things like that, uh, even trying some different extruder temps. The best I got was that settings, like I was telling you about just a second ago, of 235 and 55. Um, it just does not like to stick and lay down a nice first layer. Um, if you get a whole lot of changes, sometimes it will actually stick too good. Um, I've heard of people literally ripping chunks out of whatever their bed material is because this stuff sticks too well. Um, they do recommend sometimes using a little bit of glue stick, uh, especially if you're using like PEI sheets, uh, just to give a layer there to help actually, rather than help it stick, help it release. Um, the layer lines in here aren't too bad. Uh, the letters are pretty crisp. It's got a typical TPU surface finish. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're making TPU parts, you're not actually making big parts you're making accessories to parts so for instance this is a different TPU um, these are feet for a phone stand that's the kind of stuff that a lot of times you'll see done with TPU so I did also print a Benchy pay, pay no attention to the fact he's missing his smokestack I actually broke that off getting it off the bed um, that was my fault I didn't wait long enough but otherwise it's it's stringy but like we just talked about that's normal you're gonna see that with TPU I mean, you can see it there, I don't know if you can see the strings, but they, they pull off pretty good. Um, you could clean it up. Now, one thing that's interesting is you can actually read the letters on the bottom of the Benchy. Um, don't get me wrong, this first layer is still pretty terrible, but it, it, it's crisp. It printed very nicely once it started going. Uh, the layer lines are, are there in full force, which you would expect with this particular type of material. Uh, this was printed at a .2 layer height. But all in all, it, it's not a bad Benchy. I mean, you can't read the words on the back of the Benchy. Um, but not a whole lot of sagging. The bridges worked really nice, and it turned out pretty good. So our last print is this phone case here. So obviously the bottom of it is not printed in the TPU. The bottom of it is printed in Inland PLA. Um, so if you want to look here somewhere, there'll be a card uh, if you want to see the review of that. That stuff, I, it's one of my favorites. Um, but this top part here is what was printed in that. And 
It's got just enough flex that it would hold your phone in place and it's got enough flex that you can fit these keys together and it's got enough spring back to actually hold them in place. Now remember we talked about that terrible first layer. Well that causes problems because on a print like this you have to print it this way. So then that terrible first layer becomes the part that's on the front of your phone and you don't necessarily want to look at that all the time. Um, I, I am probably thinking that you might be able to dial that in and get some better first layers through a lot of practice and a lot of work. Um, as you can see, I haven't been through a ton of this spool yet, but I, it, it's, for being their easiest one, it's still relatively difficult. So, now what do I think about this? Because like I said, this is a higher end product. This is a more expensive product. Now, let's take a look at this one. This one is done with SaintSmart TPU. Uh, it's very cheap stuff. Um, it's not a whole lot more expensive than uh, PLA. And you notice it's got about the same amount of flex as this has. Um, it's got a nice you know, feel to it. It prints almost the exact same uh, temperature settings. And if you look at these two coins, you notice they both look about the same. They both had the same issues with the layers, uh, with that first layer. Um, they're both pretty equivalent on crispness of the letters. Uh, the layer lines look very similar. The stringing is very similar. So I would say if you want to try it, you know, I'll put a link down below as to where to get it. This stuff, I mean, it works, it works fine for what it is. It works okay for TPU. Personally, I don't think it's, uh, worth the extra price when I can use this TPU and get pretty similar results. Um, if you want to see the review of this TPU, take a look somewhere up here and uh, I'll throw a card up there to link you out to that review. But uh, I think my final thought is going to be, you know, yes, this is good stuff, but so is this. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Um, you know, like I said, if you want to spend the money on it, that's great. I'll put a link for it down below. But I just don't see the value in it when I can get something quite a bit cheaper that prints equally as well. Uh, so if you're liking the content, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you know when I put out new videos. Uh, if you guys want some insight into what's coming up or what I'm printing myself right now, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. You're going to see that right here. Uh, otherwise... Like I said, I'm Jason. This is the 3D Printing Corner. Everybody have a good day.